Introducing Blockchip, the General Store's latest payment processing integration that uses blockchain technology to safely and securely process transactions. Blockchip Portal is the perfect tool for any merchant. In addition to providing up-to-the-minute transaction and batch information, the portal also allows you to do so much more, including terminal activation and the ability to upload graphics and videos that will turn your terminal into a marketing machine. The Merchant Profile allows you to set your company name, time zone, and default graphic to be displayed when the terminal is not processing transactions. Here, you can set accepted methods of payment, and you can set your auto settle or batch time. And remember, your blockchip terminals are network devices, which are updated daily, so you can rest assured your devices are always current. Batch histories are easily accessible. And again, you can upload images and videos to be displayed when the device is not in use. Or, you can create slideshows to display weekly specials, upcoming events, and anything else you'd like to display to promote your brand. In our example, we opted to run a short video on our terminal when not in use. Again, the portal is where you activate each terminal you place in your store. And finally, you can even order new terminals directly from the portal. Setup in the General Store is super simple. First, select Store Controls Maintenance from the Back Office menu. Then select Payment Methods and Processor Maintenance. After selecting Blockchip, enter the supplied API key, bear token, and signing key, and select Save Setup. Then exit to the main menu. Next, Select Station Controls Maintenance, and all you have to do here is ensure that your station name matches the terminal name you set up in the Blockchip portal, as shown here. And as you can see, the station name and the terminal name match. And that's all you have to do. Now let's take a look at some transactions. We'll start with a chip card sale. We'll start by selling some items. And then we'll select F10 Finish and F3 Block Chip. The terminal then prompts the customer to insert their card. And once the transaction is approved, the customer can sign for the transaction. And that's it. The transaction is now complete. Now let's take a look at a swiped card transaction. Again, we'll start by selling some items. Then we'll select F10 Finish and F3 Block Chip. And this time the customer will swipe their card and once approved, they can sign for the transaction. And that's it. There may be times when you need to manually enter a customer's card information. So let's take a look. First, we'll start by selling some items. And then we'll select F10 Finish. This time we'll hit Shift F3 on the keyboard or we can right click the block chip button. The customer will then be prompted to enter their card number. Followed by the expiration date. And finally the CVV number. 
And once the transaction is approved, the sale is complete. And that's it. Now let's take a look at a split tender transaction. We'll start by selling some items. And then we'll select F10 finish. This time we're going to pay $20 in cash and the remainder on credit card. Once approved, the customer can sign. And that's it, the sale is now complete. Now let's take a look at returns. This first return demonstrates a reversal, or post void, where we are returning an invoice processed earlier in the day. So after selecting return as the transaction type, you must enter the original ticket number, select all items, accept, then select F10 Finish. We complete the return by selecting Block Chip. The customer is not prompted to re-enter the card information with this type of return, so that's it. The sale is now complete. And now for a return without an original invoice number. First, we select Return as the transaction type. Then we select F3 No Invoice. And we'll answer yes to the warning message. Then we'll enter the items being returned. We'll select F10 finish. Then select F3 block chip. And once the transaction is approved and the customer signs, the transaction is complete. And that's it. And finally, Let's take a look at a declined transaction. We'll start by selling some items. Then we'll choose F10 finish and F3 block chip. The customer will try to use their swipe card, but when it comes back declined, we'll simply click OK on the decline message. And in this example, the customer is going to try another card, so we'll select block chip again. This time the card will get approved. So once the customer signs for the transaction, the transaction will be complete. And that's it. So as you can see, the block chip integration offers easy setup, a powerful merchant portal, and lightning quick transaction speeds. So give us a call or send us an email today for more information.